And now as we begin our worship, may the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, and may the word of Christ dwell in us richly. And with thankfulness in our hearts, let us pass the peace of Christ amongst each other. This morning's Gospel reading is a story about how Jesus heals a man born blind. It is from the book of John, chapter 9, verses 1 through 12. As he went along, he saw a blind man from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming, when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. So he went, the man washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others says, No, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes opened? they asked. He replied, The man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and then I could see. Where is this man? they asked him. I don't know, he said. That ends our gospel reading. Well, today's message is titled Seeing with New Eyes. While I was studying this passage, one commentator I read asked an interesting question. Has God ever helped you? Has God ever done anything really nice for you? However we ask that question, I believe God's help comes in many ways, often mysterious and sometimes even unknown. For example, Christian writer Rock Bottomley tells a story of how his daughter Bethany was saved by a dream. Now it wasn't Bethany who dreamed the dream, but her friend Jody. While Bethany and her three friends were on vacation, Jody dreamed that they were in a bad accident. In her dream, Jody was the only one wearing a seatbelt, and she was the only survivor. Jody told her friends about the dream the next day, and they, obviously spooked, decided to wear their seatbelts. Later that day, the car dropped a wheel onto the shoulder of the road. The driver lost control. The car rolled onto the medium strip, but no one was seriously injured. The investigating police officer said, if you hadn't had your seatbelts on, the outcome would have been a lot different. Has God ever given you a message in a dream? Maybe you went to bed with a problem on your mind and then mysteriously awoke with an answer. Well, dreams have been known to change history. We all hear of the great scientists who woke up with a solution to a problem. But by the way, in 1965, Paul McCartney composed the entire melody for the hit song Yesterday from a Dream. It came from him to him completely finished, and when he woke, he quickly replicated the song on his piano, and he asked his friends and family if they'd ever heard it before, because he went, his initially was worried that he was simply replicating someone else's work. He was quoted as saying, for about a month, I went around to people in the music business and asked them whether they had heard the song before. Eventually, he said, it became like handling something in it into the police. I thought if no one claimed it after a few weeks, it could be mine. Now, it was a famous song, and of course, we all wish that we had warning dreams or amazing inspirations like this at times in our lives. We don't always, but I do got, believe that God is at work in our lives. Whether God is solving problems through dreams or inspiring us more directly, or in our connection with people in our community that help us. God often does for us what we cannot do for our own selves. Yeah, well, maybe God has helped, but we didn't even know this. 
In fact, sometimes God helps us and we will call it a coincidence. And a coincidence is, is when some things happen, events happen at the same time by accident. And they seem to be connected. So whether by coincidence or not, God is always connected with us. In our gospel lesson today, nobody called what happened a coincidence. They didn't know what to call it. They were bewildered. There was a man blind in town. He was born blind, and Jesus gave him sight. We could say that Jesus restored his sight, but the man never had any sight to restore. He'd been born blind. So Jesus created sight from nothing. That's sometimes how God works. God created the world from nothing. So as the story goes this morning, Jesus and his disciples came upon the man who has been known to have been born blind. It was a small town. Everybody knows everybody's business, family background, birth details, etc. But soon we will see that this chance meeting of Jesus, the disciples, and the blind man was no mere coincidence. From the way it looks, as disciples walked by, Jesus said nothing to them about the blind man or about the blind man's unfortunate circumstance. I don't know if Jesus silently regretted this man's problems or if he was just walking by, but it is not just a coincidence. So they come upon this man, and strangely enough, Jesus is quiet. We can't imagine that Jesus wanted to ignore the man, but he didn't seem to pay him any, any attention. The disciples' response, however, was another thing. It looks like they wanted to see the man's situation as a teaching moment. Look at the blind guy, they asked, blind from birth. That's what sin will do, right? So who's responsible for the sin? Did his parents anger God with some ungodly doings? Or did he cause God to punish him with his blindness? Well, that's kind of a strange thing to say. He was blind from birth. But Jesus responds, This is an example of a tragedy with no sin. There is no sin story behind this. The who question is not the question we should be asking. It's the wrong question. Who sinned? Nobody. So Jesus went on to explain that the what question. What happened to this man? He was born blind through no fault of his own. And he goes on, what are we going to do to help him? To make visible the gospel for this man. In fact, Jesus uses a very interesting Greek word, which means to make visible to this man. Make visible the love of God. In other words, the question is, what will we look for when we see an afflicted individual like this to how peace and comfort and healing might come to him for the glory of God who made him. The what is the business of helping to bring wholeness to the man and to others like him. This story is particularly important now during our time of fear and uncertainty under the social isolation we are living during the COVID-19 pandemic panic. Why did this happen? Why did the, why did the virus spread? Why was the man born blind? Really, he or anything, anyone else didn't do anything to cause it. It just happened. We need to take another perspective. There's a story of a panhandler who was sitting across the street from an artist's studio. The artist saw him and thought he would make an interesting portrait study. So from a distance, the artist painted the man whose shoulders drooped, whose eyes were downcast, and who looked very sad. When the artist finished the work, the artist took the portrait over to the man so that he could see it. Who is that? The man asked. The painting bore a slight resemblance to the man, but in the painting before him, the man saw a person of dignity with squared shoulders, uplifted eyes. He asked the artist, is that me? I don't look like that. But the artist replied, but that is the person I see in you. So there's just a couple of takeaways here I want to give us before ending the message. We have some choices. So for me, the takeaway of the story boils down to a handful of what's, what's that we can do, especially important in our communities right now. First of all, let's choose action over inaction. 
In other words, let's do something. Jesus said, go, wash in the pool. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. That's cool with me. Jesus said, choose community. In the story of Acts, it's about the fellowship of believers. In the book of Acts, the story of Christian history, our beginnings, everyone was filled with awe. And many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. And all believers were together and had a lot, lot in common. It's all about community. And so during our social distancing time, members are staying connected by reaching out to folks, by making phone calls to see how they're doing. That's community. Choose community. Stay connected. Another takeaway is choose fun over drudgery. Enjoy God's gifts. Yes, Jesus said that faith started with a tiny mustard seed. But we don't have to stay there inside that tiny mustard seed. Faith grows and it spreads excitedly like a mustard plant. Enjoy the now, the newness of spring, which started Thursday. Enjoy life just as it is right now. And especially take time to enjoy the simple things like togetherness. And maybe each other's cooking, since we'll be together often during this, during this time of social isolation. And finally, choose bold over mild. In the story, people kept asking the man who was born blind repeatedly because they just couldn't believe him. They were incredulous. They asked him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? In verse 26, and in verse 27, the man responded boldly. I have told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want me to hear it? Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? So yes, choose boldly. I want to finish with this little thing that I discovered recently. You know, the Sundays leading up to Lent give us some of the very longest scripture readings of the whole year. In today's gospel lesson, I've purposely shortened it. But there's a website called The Book a Minute. Their motto is that they tell you all you need to know in a minute. And when cliff notes are long, read the book a minute. So I looked up a couple for us. For example, The Confessions of St. Augustine. It's a huge book, thick. In the book a minute version, it goes like this. I was a bad boy. Darn, was I a bad boy. Not anymore, though. If you have read Dr. Seuss's Green Eggs and Ham, remember Dr. Seuss's story about green eggs and ham? This is the book of minute version. Some creature. I won't eat green eggs and ham anywhere, anytime, under any circumstances. Sam, I am. Here, try it. Some creature. Yum, I like it. <laughs> book of minute. And now, <clears throat> excuse me the story of the man born blind who was healed by Jesus. Blind man, I can't see. Disciples, someone sinned. The blind man got what was coming to him. Jesus, no one's to blame. Here's mud in your eye, blind man. Blind man, I can see. This is what love looks like. The end. And so now let us join together in prayer. This prayer was inspired by Ephesians 5, 8 through 10. It, uh, I adapted it from a resource on the internet by an anonymous person from belief.com, beliefnet.com. Would you join me now in prayer? And as a moment of silence at this time, let us just keep in mind those folks who are in our hearts and minds anyone and everyone dealing with the coronavirus situation that we face as a, as a country and a world and a church and community. The first responders, the helpers, let us keep our hearts and prayers open for them as their needs. Now please join me in prayer. And now trusting and delighting in you, we commend all our lives into your loving care as we offer our prayers in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord, who taught us to pray. And would you join me? Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Those of you who could join us today, I hope you were blessed by the message and the scripture reading and the prayers. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen.